My sister, who took John away from me, said, I'll be happy enough for both of us. She sent me an invitation to her wedding with John, trying to make me jealous. But I told mom, we'll go anyway. We'll make sure to make it special. Usually my parents are nice and hardly ever get mad, but they've had enough of my sister's bad behavior. We went to the wedding with determined smiles, but it turned out to be a disaster, not a happy occasion. I'm Hannah Turner, 24 years old, and I draw pictures for a living. I got married recently, not even a year ago, and my relationship with my husband, John, is strong. We met through a friend and quickly started dating. He proposed to me at a restaurant with a beautiful view at night. Our wedding was full of happiness, surrounded by family and friends. One day, I noticed that my husband John forgot his phone in the living room. I picked it up and brought it to him, saying, John, you forgot your phone. He seemed a bit nervous as he took it, thanking me quickly before rushing out the door. His sudden rush left me feeling uneasy, and that feeling marked the beginning of my suspicions. After that day, John started carrying his phone with him everywhere, even at home. I found it strange, but I couldn't imagine John would cheat on me, right? We'd been getting along fine without any major problems. So I tried to convince myself that everything was okay. However, my trust didn't last long. While I was hanging up laundry, I saw a notification on my own phone. It was an email from an unfamiliar address. Hey, long time no see. How have you been? It seemed like it could be from someone I knew. But I heard about scams where people pretend to be friends, so I decided to ignore it. But then another message came through. Hey, don't ignore me, I can see you read it. Ignoring your sister? That's just like you, always so mean. Right after I closed my phone, it rang, and it was another message from the same unknown sender, calling me their sister. Indeed, I do have a sister named Sally, but she's known for causing trouble in various ways. Sally, my sister, had a history of causing trouble, especially with money. She often borrowed money from friends and then disappeared without paying them back, leaving my parents and me to deal with the fellow. Because she was their daughter, my parents always ended up paying off her debts. On top of that, Sally had a habit of making complaints over the smallest things. She'd yell and be rude, even making people kneel down to apologize to her. This made her a difficult customer to deal with. Another problem was Sally's love life. She had a thing for men who were already in relationships, whether they were friends or family, she didn't care about causing tension between people, she just pursued what she wanted. Because of her behavior, I had cut ties with Sally since she left home, so when I received a message with the word sister on my phone, I felt uneasy. I debated whether to respond, but I ultimately decided to ignore it. Whether it was really Sally or someone pretending to be her, I didn't want to get involved. However, the messages kept coming until I finally opened one to block the sender. What I saw shocked me to my core. It was a message from Sally, saying that John was now hers and that I should hurry up and divorce him. There was even a photo of John and Sally together as proof. I didn't need any more confirmation, I knew it was true. I sat down, feeling dizzy with shock and disbelief. After Sally's message, John never came back home. Instead, all I got was a set of divorce papers filled out by him. My attempts to reach John were met with silence. Losing my husband in such a sudden way left me feeling devastated, hangry, and emotionally fragile. Why, John? I cried for days. Once I had calmed down a bit, I decided to reach out to Sally. What do you want? Let me speak to John. You've been ignoring me for so long, and now you contact me without even saying hello or apologizing. What's your intention? I demanded. Excuse me? You should be the one apologizing. Just send John back home for now. No way. He doesn't want to come back. He says he loves me more than he ever loved you. And why should I apologize? It's your fault for not being able to keep him. No matter what I said, Sally wouldn't listen. I was already feeling terrible mentally, too exhausted to worry or think anymore. I realized it was pointless to keep arguing. Holding on would only make things worse. You know, if you're going to be angry at someone, be angry at your own lack of charm loser. After that conversation, I shut off my phone. I was done dealing with Sally and had lost all affection for John, who had chosen her. Before I knew it, I had signed the divorce papers, and just like that, my once happy marriage was over. My life became a mess after that. Maybe because of the emotional damage, I struggled to eat and felt more tired than usual. I looked so worn out that my coworkers started to worry. 
Despite trying to reassure them with a smile, it felt like my body and mind were reaching their limits. Eventually, I collapsed at work and woke up in the emergency room. My parents and a close co-worker were there beside me. Hannah. Can you recognize me, Hannah? Their voices brought me back to reality. Looking around, I realized I was in hospital, remembering what had happened. Oh, I collapsed, didn't I? My dad sighed with relief. We were so worried when the hospital called. Are you working too hard? He asked. But deep down, I knew it was the stress from John and Sally. Maybe, I muttered, and my mom quickly called for a nurse to get a doctor. After a checkup, they decided to keep me in the hospital for observation. Are you eating properly? Getting enough rest? My dad bombarded me with questions, clearly worried. I assured him I was okay. My mom asked him to buy some drinks and snacks for me, and he agreed, leaving the room. Hey Hannah, something's not right, is it? Natalie said. You've seemed really tired lately, and this is so unlike you. They say women have strong intuition, and Natalie seemed to have it. I sighed and opened up to them about everything that had been happening. I ended up crying while explaining, realizing I had reached my breaking point without even realizing it. I thought I could handle it all, but it turns out I didn't understand myself as well as I thought. As I tried to laugh it off, my mom squeezed my hand tightly. I had no idea all of this was going on. Why didn't you tell us sooner? This is the first time I'm hearing about the divorce. I'm sorry to say this in front of you, Mom, but is Sally out of her mind? I can't believe it. Both of them expressed their anger towards Sally, and I could tell they were genuinely worried about me. I didn't want to cause trouble or worry anyone, so I tried to downplay the situation. I felt embarrassed, and part of me believed what Sally had said might be true. Maybe it was my fault for not being more appealing. That's nonsense. What are you talking about? It's clear that Sally and her ex are the ones in the wrong here. Naily is right. You didn't do anything wrong. To think you were suffering all alone. I'm so sorry. Both of them looked like they were on the verge of tears. I regretted not relying on the people around me more. My mom suggested that I come back home for a while considering my mental and physical state, and after the doctor also recommended rest. Naily took care of the paperwork at work with my medical certificate. When my dad returned with drinks and heard about me resting at home, he immediately agreed that it was a good idea. Naily managed to explain everything to my workplace and HR assured me, You've got plenty of paid time off saved up, so take your time off to rest. After thanking Natalie, she reassured me that she'd be there for me and I should lean on her whenever I needed. Over the next few days, I stayed at my parents' house. Daily came to visit occasionally, and I could feel my mind and body gradually recovering. I realized that keeping everything bottled up inside wasn't healthy. Today, as Natalie and I were enjoying cake prepared by my mom, my phone rang, piquing my curiosity. I opened it, and my heart raced. Hey there, how are you doing? Thought you might be wondering about us, so I decided to reach out. It was Sally, who I hadn't spoken to since the fallout. I regretted letting my guard down and checking my phone. Naily noticed the change in my expression. What's wrong? Are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. I replied, but it was clear something was off. Natalie asked if she could see my phone. I didn't want to worry her, but I had just realized that bottling things up wasn't good. So, I nodded and handed her my phone. Natalie looked puzzled as she read the message. What's this? Is she picking a fight? This is Sally, right? I nodded in response and Natalie closed the phone. Just ignore it. Actually, let's block her. No point in dealing with someone like this, she suggested and I agreed. Opening my phone to block Sally just then, another message from Sally came in. We've been living together smoothly since then, and guess what? I got pregnant. You might be thinking already, but nope. John and I started our relationship six months ago. The word pregnant made time stop for me. We had been trying to conceive during our marriage. It would be great if we could be blessed with our baby soon, we used to say. Reading this message hurt deeply. Tears started flowing and Natalie, seeing me cry, took the phone from my hand. After reading the message, she yelled, What? I can't believe this. I'm so mad I could explode. We should sue them. Suing was something I had considered when I first received the message, but now, I didn't have the energy or will to pursue it. I just don't want to deal with this anymore, I muttered, and Natalie calmed down. Sorry, I got too emotional. 
You're right. It's best not to get involved. Natalie's comforting back rub felt so kind, and I cried a bit more. Then my mom came into the living room, having seen what happened. Hey Hannah, actually, I haven't told your dad about this yet. I understood what that meant. Knowing this would infuriate my dad. But I think it's time we told him. My mom's solemn words struck me deeply. I took a moment to think. I also believe it's time to talk about it. This is just too much, I concluded. Natalie's words convinced me too. So I decided to let my mom talk to him. My mom said she would talk about it, so I decided to leave it to her. After Natalie went home and it got dark, my dad came back from work. He said it smelled good in the house and asked what was for dinner. I welcomed him home, and he seemed happier since I returned. Mom said dad's mood had improved, and she was glad I was back. Her words made me really happy, knowing I had a place where I felt calm. But today, mom looked serious when she talked to dad. She said they needed to discuss something important, and dad understood, becoming serious too. Then dad mentioned it was about me, and I could see kindness in his eyes which almost made me cry. After explaining everything to dad, he seemed calm but a bit angry. He told me not to block Sally yet, even though I didn't have to read her messages. He must have had his reasons. Mom usually followed dad's advice in situations like this. Dad also suggested letting Natalie know about it. I understood and agreed. Both mom and dad reassured me that everything would be okay and that they were here for me, along with Natalie. Their kind words and smiles made me feel so relieved and happy that I ended up crying. Seeing this, both my parents laughed, and my heart felt warm. That night, I told Natalie everything, and she said, It's wonderful you have such supportive parents, and remember, you've got me too. I gazed at the stars, feeling comforted. After talking it over more, I decided to move back home. That meant going back to my parents' place since it's close enough to commute to work from there. Daily thought it would be better for my mental well-being to be away from a house full of painful memories. Since I was the one on the rental contract, I handled canceling it and sent John's stuff to his parents' house. On moving day, I sorted out mail forwarding at the post office and completed the move smoothly. I bid farewell to the landlord with a smile, leaving on good terms. Back at my parents' place, I settled back in and returned to work. My coworkers had been concerned, but now I could genuinely tell them I was okay with a smile. My boss reminded me not to push myself too hard, which made me appreciate my workplace even more. A few months later, I returned home. When I got there, my mom had a serious look on her face. She said we needed to talk and asked me to come to the living room after changing. I sensed something was wrong from her expression. After changing, I went to the living room where my parents sat, looking puzzled over a letter. I sat down in front of them, and they showed me the letter. It was an invitation to a wedding, but what could be the problem with it? I asked if I could see it, and my dad said yes. When I looked at it, I saw it was from Sally and John. I was shocked. What? I couldn't believe it. You filed a forwarding address because you moved, right? My dad asked. Yes, that's right. No wonder both my parents looked worried, but surprisingly, I felt calm. If this had happened before, I would have been really shocked, but now, I just felt disgusted. Are you okay? My mom asked, concerned. Dad was also watching me. Somehow, I'm better than I expected. I just feel disgusted. I wonder how far they want to go to insult me right, even if she's my daughter. This is too much for me to handle, I said. I'm glad Hannah isn't as shocked as we thought, but this is still unacceptable. I could see my parents were angry for my sake. I'm grateful for my parents who are standing up for me. The invitation was addressed to me. Do I have to go? I asked, feeling uncertain, and my parents looked at me with determination. Mom and I will go. We'll show them what hell looks like. It was unsettling to see my usually gentle parents so angry. But the invitation is addressed to me, I pointed out. Well, we're the parents of the bride. It would be rude not to attend, right? My dad reasoned. Exactly. It's our daughter's wedding. We're looking forward to it, Mom said with a smile, but her eyes didn't match her expression, making me nervous. Dad brushed off my concerns and kept getting ready. I hope it's okay, he said, ignoring me. I heard a car pulling up, so I went to check if they had called a taxi. But instead, I found Natalie stepping out of a familiar car. Natalie, what are you doing here? I asked in surprise as I opened the door. She looked stunning in her party dress. Good morning. Are your dad and mom ready, she asked ignoring my question. 
Wait, am I attending the wedding too? I was shocked by her statement. When my parents came out, I asked them what was going on. It turned out that one of John's relatives was a friend of Naylee's. Upon hearing about the situation, she was invited to attend as his relative's girlfriend. My parents didn't object. In fact, they seemed excited about going together. As I pondered what they were up to, Naylee said, I can't just sit back after what happened to Hannah. You get it, right? Despite feeling anxious, I agreed. Then my parents and Natalie left together for the venue in one car. I thought about joining them, but Natalie seemed to sense my hesitation and said, If you want to see, I can show you through a video call. So I stayed home and trusted them. But my curiosity got the best of me, and I reached out to Natalie for a video call. When they arrived at the venue, my parents and Natalie headed to the reception. Natalie was on the guest list, thanks to John's relative's arrangement, but my parents weren't listed since they weren't officially invited. The receptionist went to check their names, and that's when Sally showed up. Sally was surprised to see my parents and couldn't hide her confusion. Why are you here? she asked. Well, we're the parents. It's only natural for us to come, my parents replied. There seems to be a mistake. We didn't receive an invitation, they explained, which made Sally force a smile. Um, the invitation was actually meant for Hannah. Yes, we were surprised when Hannah told us about it. We had no idea about the wedding. Since Hannah couldn't make it today due to work, we came instead. It's fine to invite Hannah, but you should have sent one to us too. It wouldn't look good without the bride's parents, right? My dad pointed out, mentioning the lack of invitation twice. Though I couldn't see my parents' expressions through Natalie's video call, I could picture the scene in my mind. Yes, I'm your daughter after all. Of course, you'd be happy. Sally seemed to genuinely believe my parents came for her sake. I thought she was delusional, I muttered to myself. Then John appeared. He turned pale at the sight of my parents. Relax, John. They came to celebrate with us. They must really love me, especially since Hannah is like that. Sally reassured John, who seemed relieved and greeted my parents with a smile. John's parents also joined in, and the atmosphere became friendly and warm. Seeing my former in-laws chatting happily, a memory of being fondly cared for by them stings a bit. I wondered if they were only nice to me because I was their son's wife, which was a bit shocking. Maybe it was indeed the right decision not to go, I murmured. And the scene shifted to the ceremony and then to the reception. At the reception, Sally and John made a happy entrance. Natalie occasionally asked me if I was okay, but surprisingly, I was fine responding, I'm okay. More than anything, I was worried about my phone's battery, but she reassured me she had a portable charger, well prepared indeed. When it was time to read the letter of gratitude to the parents, Sally started panicking because she hadn't expected her parents to come. Seeing this, my parents asked the MC for the microphone. Today, we weren't actually supposed to come, so it's understandable that Sally wasn't prepared. As a surprise from us to you, we'd like to convey a message to our daughter Sally, my dad announced. The venue erupted in applause. Sally seemed relieved by the save and smirked, clapping exaggeratedly. Dad, I'm so happy. Her exaggerated gratitude was annoying. I kept watching, feeling uneasy. Then my dad did something unbelievable with a smile. Our surprise from us to you is this, he announced, and suddenly the doors of the reception hall opened, revealing several men standing there, all looking outraged. I watched the scene unfold, wondering what would happen next. Sally turned pale at the sight of them. Our Sally is so charming that she has received affection from many men. The kind Sally has responded to all these feelings, making her a pride and joy. And today, these gentlemen wanted to give us a prize, so we brought them here, my dad initiated, leading to the men storming the stage, expressing their anger. Sally tried to escape but was confronted with accusations like, What do you mean you're marrying someone else? How much do you think I've spent on you? Pay back the money you borrowed. Sally turned pale and was nearly in tears watching this. Naily coolly commented, Wow. While I was stunned. John, confronting Sally with the what's going on, found her too shocked and flustered to respond. Then my mom grabbed the microphone and started talking. Guess what? We have another surprise. As my husband mentioned earlier, our daughter Sally is really popular, even with other women. When mom said this, a bunch of women in the crowd stood up. We invited those who wanted to meet Sally. After mom spoke, the women went over to Sally. 
Suddenly, someone else grabbed the microphone and shouted, You stole my man, and now you're trying to act all happy. Give me money for cheating with my husband. You disappeared as soon as I lent you money. Pay me back. Everything got chaotic. The reception room went from noisy to really chaotic. I bet the other guests were shocked, but they seemed more disgusted than surprised. It was scary to see my parents smiling through all this madness, and I realized this was the kind of reputation my sister had. Amidst all the chaos, someone else grabbed the microphone. Sally, it's really nice to see such a lovely person becoming our son's wife. Surprisingly, it was my ex-mother-in-law who spoke up unexpectedly. I was puzzled, wondering what she meant. She went on. It might not be as grand as the surprise Sally's parents prepared, but we also have something special for you. John seemed shocked by his mother's words. What do you mean, Mom? Can't you see what's happening? But his attempt to calm things down was ignored by my ex-father-in-law, who took hold of the microphone. First, we want to thank Sally's parents for their thoughtful surprise. I happen to own a business, and we decided to remove John from his expected position as my successor. That's our surprise for you. What? What's going on? Sally and John were shocked. I remembered hearing about John being prepared to take over his dad's business during their marriage, so his dad's announcement was surprising. What are you saying, Dad? You've made your own choices, cheated by your own will, divorced by your own will, and remarried by your own will. Someone who can make such commendable decisions should start your own business rather than take over mine. Don't decide on your own. You said I was the successor. John looked panicked. We're serious. You're already doing great on your own. Use your judgment to live your life from now on. With Sally by your side, his dad replied. Exactly, I couldn't be prouder of having a son who can make such independent decisions, I was stunned. My ex-in-laws seemed to be laughing along with my parents, but their eyes didn't match their smiles. They seemed pretty angry. Natalie found the situation amusing. They deserve it. I can barely keep from laughing. I'm just speechless. I said, and Natalie caught me up on what had happened while I was away. My ex-in-laws came to apologize. They truly considered me and my parents as part of their family. They had teamed up with my parents to plan this surprise retaliation. Natalie had been keeping in touch with my parents and had also heard the story from John's relatives, so she knew everything. Hearing this brought tears to my eyes, realizing I had so many people supporting me. You're not alone, Hannah. There are so many people who care about you, Natalie said, trying to hold back her own tears. How could we stay silent when someone we care about is hurting? Yeah, yeah, I cried, unable to speak properly, just nodding. Thank you, I managed to say finally. I saw my parents and ex-in-law smiling kindly at me through the screen. Meanwhile, chaos continued at the venue, with the staff trying to calm down the disastrous situation. Then, a man stood up and made his way toward the stage. He stood in front of John, who then collapsed to his knees. After saying something to John, the man returned to his seat. Hey, what did that man say? I couldn't quite make it out from this far away unless he used a microphone. Maybe I should go ask him directly. Naily suggested and headed toward the man with her phone. Excuse me, she said as she approached, and the man turned around. I was surprised. Uncle? It was indeed my dad's brother, my uncle. Natalie showed him the screen, and upon seeing me, my uncle looked surprised and very happy. Hannah, are you okay? I heard about what happened today from your dad. It must have been tough. Thanks for worrying about me, but I'm fine. By the way, what did you say to John just now? Ah, I told him that since I run this hotel, I'll be seeking compensation for the damages. The reception hall is a mess because of the bride and groom, my uncle explained. Both Natalie and I understood upon hearing his words. That's why John looked so pale. After chatting with my uncle for a while, I felt a bit more hopeful. Trying to spot Sally through the camera was tough because of the crowd surrounding her. This wedding had turned into anything but a celebration. Looking around, I noticed many guests leaving, including some of John's colleagues I recognized who seemed puzzled as they left. I thought to myself, well, that makes sense, feeling somewhat relieved. The wedding ended in disaster, with Sally and John looking worn out and pale by the end. And now, the bride and groom will leave, the MC announced. But by then, most of the guests had already departed, and only our parents, former in-laws, Natalie, and a few of John's relatives were left to applaud. When my parents came back home, 
I went up to greet them, and to my surprise, Natalie and John's parents were with them. I was a bit shocked but bowed to my former in-laws. I'm sorry for not keeping in touch. I regret how our marriage ended despite your kindness. I apologized, feeling guilty for not reaching out to them after the divorce. My former in-laws, with tears in their eyes, placed their hands on my shoulders. We should be the ones apologizing, they said. But I insisted it wasn't necessary and thanked them for their care during the marriage. After that, we all sat down for tea and had a pleasant chat, expressing gratitude for the wedding events and parting on good terms. I felt like I finally had closure and felt rejuvenated. A few days later, I received a message from Sally on my phone during work. I had forgotten to block her, but when I checked, it was a barrage of complaints. You ruined our wedding. Take responsibility. Did you tell our parents? Are you jealous? Stop blaming me for your unhappiness, loser. Sally's message flashed on my phone. I sighed and turned to Natalie at the next desk. Can I still claim alimony for the affair? She's practically giving me all the evidence herself, right? Fed up with it all, I decided to hire a lawyer to claim alimony. I saved all the messages and images Sally sent and replied to her. Thanks for providing evidence of the affair. A lawyer will be contacting you, so please stop contacting me directly. Sally freaked out. A lawyer? What are you doing? Stop it. She began deleting the messages and images she'd sent. When I told her that I had saved all the evidence, she panicked even more and started apologizing. Sorry, it was all lies. I'll leave Jan alone now that he's not going to be the CEO, and I won't say anything mean anymore. Please don't make me pay alimony, I already have debts. That's not my problem. I don't want Jan, and do whatever you want. Actually, maybe it's good you took him. I don't need a man who cheats. And in the end, you protected me. Thanks, sis, I replied before cutting off contact. After blocking Sally, she tried reaching out from different accounts, but I blocked those too. I quickly consulted with the lawyer I was referred to, and they acted swiftly upon receiving the evidence. Soon after, I started getting messages from John. It seemed things weren't going well with Sally. He sent me creepy messages like a lovesick Romeo, which I ignored and blocked. When he tried to contact me through the house, my parents handled it. Apparently, he got scared off by them and hasn't reached out since. Later, the lawyer informed me that John and Sally had agreed to pay the alimony. They tried to resist using Sally's usual complaint tactics, but that didn't work on a lawyer. Realizing they had no chance, they gave in. John, who was initially resistant, looked defeated and pale after learning Sally had provided plenty of evidence against him. Despite feeling bitter about being harassed by such immature individuals, I'm now just thankful for the many people who stood by me. Sally and John eventually got divorced. Sally, with no one else to turn to, contacted our house once, but my parents issued a statement of estrangement. She hung up the phone crying. John, rumored about the wedding at work, found it uncomfortable and ended up resigning. Unable to go back home, he's now getting by with part-time jobs. Meanwhile, I received a promotion at work because of my excellent performance. I also started a relationship with someone I met in my new department. Thinking ahead, Natalie also clicked with one of John's relatives, and we often share our love stories. Next month, as a celebration, my parents, Natalie, and even my former in-laws are planning a trip to the hot springs together. Despite hitting rock bottom, I feel happier than ever before.